The majority of the distortion generated in reproduction from records is due to the differences in the various geometries of the recording and reproduction processes. By far the most discussed of the distortion mechanisms is lateral tracking distortion. This arises due to differences in the path of the recording cutter head, which is driven in a straight line across the radius of the disc by a worm gear arrangement, and the cartridge, which moves in an arc at the end of a freely pivoted tone arm. A simple straight tone arm carries with it the very considerable compromise that the stylus is only tangential to the groove at one point on the record. However, the mathematics of the geometry of a tone arm path and the distortion mechanisms have been well understood since the days of the early pre-electric gramophone. This really isn't new. All modern tone arms are arranged to overhang the centre of the record and have a crank so that the cartridge sits at an angle relative to the tone arm. By these two simple geometrical means, the tracking error, that's to say the angle of the cartridge relative to the tangent of the groove, is reduced to a few degrees at any point on the record. So tracking distortion, even though it's endlessly discussed, really isn't a problem as long as the arm and cartridge are aligned correctly. So now we meet our next villain, tracing distortion. The origin of all tracing distortion is that the groove cut by a flat-faced chisel is being read by a rounded, conical or elliptical stylus. Now the cutter chisel cuts a groove which is only the width of the cutter at the peaks of the wave and which shrinks to a minimum as the wave passes through the zero position. This has the effect of squeezing the stylus up and down in the groove, even when the modulation is entirely lateral. This phenomenon is termed, appropriately enough, pinch effect. So the effect of pinching the stylus in the narrowing groove may be seen to be a, at a frequency double to that of the lateral modulation. Now don't worry about the maths here, it's really not the point to understand the maths particularly, it's really just to indicate that these distortion mechanisms are definable in terms of mathematical relationships. So now we're looking at vertical tracing distortion. Now we're looking here at a cross section of the disc um, and we're looking at a stylus riding on a contour made by the chisel. So when the recording is made by a sharp edged chisel, but playback is accomplished by means of a spherical rounded cone. Um, and the figure clearly illustrates that the motion of the playback stylus fails to follow the groove shape. Uh, the problem being that the point of contact between the spherical playback stylus and the groove wall wanders as it traces the groove. Now that too is modelable as, uh, in, in mathematics. And once again, don't concentrate on the mass. It's just to illustrate that these ph phenomena are comprehensible mathematically. Now the first two, pinch effect and vertical tracing distortion, depend on stylus shape. And that's why we have in the interface of Stereo Lab, we have um, on the dialog for phonograph, we have uh, the ability to, to set the stylus radius according to the, according to the cartridge that you're using. Now, we do cancel lateral tracking distortion, the remnants of it, but it is very important that that distortion has been reduced to the minimal level by the appropriate geometry of the Garmin cartridge. So basically we can only cancel the lower terms. So if the, the cartridge is badly aligned, we can't correct for it.
So what does it sound like? Well, from a sound quality point of view, the result of the LPDC process is substantially to reduce the garbled quality that especially plagues loud inner tracks from LPs. And it reduces the splash and raggedness in the stereo image because the tracing distortion cancellation is taking place on the vertical signal component.